So Kevin, here's the yes. after and here's the before. Uh, tell me what we got here. All right. So uh, uh, one of our, our primary concerns with building this device was to try to make it uh, not only easy to use, but to use the minimal amount of parts possible. So uh, one of the little tricks that we were able to do is utilize as many of the screws and, and hardware that come inside the servo as possible. So uh, when you're assembling, the first thing you should be very aware of is every single screw that is in this kit is used. So keep track of them. There, 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 there aren't any uh, extras, so it's hard to do. So, uh, so uh, you want to work on a clean table that uh, has either uh, enough room that you're not going to drop stuff off the side, or uh, you know a clean floor so you can find some little screws that they wander off on you. Uh, and uh, after that, we have included a battery adapter. This is a AAA battery holder. Allows you to plug in three standard AAA batteries. You can use rechargeables if you want. And it comes with uh, our uh, custom power connector readily uh, attached to it. But this isn't also a recharger. You, you, you this is not a recharger. So I also would need a recharger. So if you, if you buy rechargeable batteries, you would need uh, the okay. charger for them. Okay. And the alternative is what? Now the alternative to that, and we've provided an adapter for you uh, as well, is a uh, standard, what's called a six cell nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydrate battery. Uh, these are used for remote control cars uh, and uh, various uh, hobbyists. Okay. So what does one of those go for? Ooh, that's a good question. It, it depends on how much capacity that you actually want. You can start down as low as five or ten dollars and spend upwards of thirty or forty dollars on one. Okay. All right. And it has everything to do with how much power the battery can hold versus how much it weighs. All right. Good. Now, so we have all these servos. You have all these servos, it? and you have our hardware kit. And we've put together a kit of all of the nuts and bolts and standoffs that you're going to need, as well as all of the laser cut acrylic pieces uh, to, to make the, the hexagon. Okay. Um, one of the, uh, the little tricks that we did with this Hexapod, which uh, is relatively novel, is that there is uh, no um, sort of three-dimensional pieces, uh, as, as they're known. All of the components of this Hexapod are flat pieces held together with straight bolts from end to end. And uh, we'll get a closer look at this as we start building one of these legs, but what ends up happening is the top plate of this uh, shoulder joint and the bottom plate are actually pinching and holding the servo in place. And that acts as the, the third dimension piece to keep these uh, these parts uh, held together. And that is one of the one of the, the ways that we were able to make a, a device for such a low cost relative to, to other devices. Usually that would have to be a piece of aluminum, it'd have to be stamped and then very precisely bent. Okay, so this base part here and the legs and all of that are in this kit. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. So you have your acrylic here. And then the screws and bolts will leave that in the bag for now. Because we don't want to lose any. Yeah, we don't want to be have those wandering off. No spares. No. Uh, uh, so you have two body pieces. You have a top which has feet hole holes for the diode. So you can see that going in right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way you actually attach the diode to uh, to this kit and any of the kits that we have are through our rubber feet. The rubber feet act as our sort of universal connector. It holds solid but can be removed without uh, too much effort. Uh, under normal conditions, I've never had uh, a, a diode pop out of one of these connectors. So, uh, unless you're throwing it across really the room. Spinning quickly. Yeah, uh, unless you're doing some really interesting uh, uh, motion, that, that's not going anywhere. That will, that will hold in one piece. Uh, also included in this kit uh, are a set of pin adapters. The, the diode actually uses recessed connectors and uh, Actually, so do these servos. So we provided a set of pin header adapters, which I've uh, plugged in so they don't get lost. Uh, as part of the kit, that would be uh, included as well. So you have a set of washers, uh, which are actually cut out of the laser cut acrylic. There are, there are two types of washers. There is uh, one type, which you can see here on the end of the servo. Uh, and what that is is a spacer to allow the screws that come in the servo kit to run through the acrylic and into the plastic underneath without uh, causing interference on the servo on the other side. Uh, the other type of washer is uh, just that, a standard style washer. They use spacers in various places throughout the kit. 
and we actually cut them out of the same plastic that the rest of the kit is made out of. Um, what else we got here? We got, these are the front leg pieces, okay. uh, or sorry, all of the leg pieces. These came in, uh, these are clear, so these are, these are clear. the black model. Uh, yes. They come in different colors? We, we uh, technically support whatever uh, color acrylic uh, someone wants, but the uh, custom colors would require us to go and yeah. uh, uh, find a specific. We had an orange one running around for a little while, you can see it on the video on our website. So the leg pieces come in two parts. You have the, the end piece and uh, the, the middle piece. And once again, you see one of these. Uh, uh, so on here, this is the end piece and that's the middle piece. Right, so okay. as an example, end piece would go there, middle piece would go there. Okay. So this gets two of the servo horns connected and these little white pieces on the servo are called, called horns. Right. So two servo horns get attached to this piece. Uh, and one servo gets mounted into this piece. So and there's then, a servo here and a servo there. Yep, so yep. Servo here, servo there, and then a third one sticking up. Uh, I missed the one sticking up. Yep, that's how it, uh, that is the three-dimensional uh, uh, motion for the legs. Now, the, the shoulder parts These also... These are right? Uh, no, yeah, those are just uh, okay. little scrap bits. The, the holes, when they get cut out of the other, like, still kind of stick in there, but sometimes you pull them out. Uh, so, so, the shoulder consists of two more pieces. You have the top plate, which allows the stand-up servo to go into, and then the bottom plate, which has uh, the, the mating holes for uh, the, uh, the bolts to go all the way through. They have the mating slots, and those two slots are what actually hold the servo upright. So, it would be in this sort of configuration. And then uh, the, the bolts in the kit go straight through uh, bottom to top. Then the servo comes, uh, the final servo, the stand-up one, sits in, in this little slot. Sorry, sits in this little slot up here, yep. and uh, you get a screw to go in to bolt it down. Okay. So uh, technically, that is every single piece within the kit, uh, or one of them. Uh, and it's just a matter of starting to put all the pieces together in a logical right. manner. Okay, so um, and the instructions are available online? The instructions are available online. We have a series of uh, a photo documentary of me building this one. Okay. Uh, all the steps in the process, what, uh, what all the pieces look like, and, and what the orientations uh, should be for each leg. Uh, so, uh, all right, so as we start building this, uh, when we get this all home, we'll uh, maybe do some step step by step videos of uh, construction. We'll try it with a 14 year old. We'll try it with a 16 year old. Uh, see if we're as smart as a fifth grader. <laughs> so great, excellent. Thank you. Thank you.